Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the effect of multiple substituents on the regiochemical outcome of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And I'm going to do this by way of a number of examples. For all of my examples, I'm going to use chlorination as uh, an example, electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Uh, I'm choosing it because it works uh, on almost all arenes activated and deactivated, so I don't have to worry about things like, um, oh, the, the friedel crass reactions don't work on deactivated arenes because I'm going to have activators and deactivators all over the place. So in my first example, uh, I have metanitroanisole. Um, and in all of these cases, we're going to start by analyzing the directing effects of the substituents already on the ring. And so the methoxy group in anisole is an ortho para director. The nitro group is a meta director. And what that means is that our, you know, our methoxy group is directing ortho I'm going to draw some arrows to the two ortho positions. And it would direct para, but the nitro group is already there. The nitro group directs meta, which happens to be the same two positions that the methoxy group is directing to. And so this is a thing that happens. And when it happens, you should get excited because these are the easy cases. Uh, since both functional, both directing groups are pointing at the same positions, uh, just put our new uh, substituent in that spot and feel pretty good. Okay. In my second example, we're going to look at the same two functional groups, but they're going to be ortho to each other. Okay. And we can do the same kind of analysis. All right, so the methoxy group directs ortho. It also directs para. Giant arrow. I don't like this giant arrow, but I can, I can mess with it. Okay. And it would also direct or to the other ortho position, but the nitro group is there. Now the nitro group directs meta. And one of those is, is here. And the other one is a slightly different arrow. There we go. So, and again, we have a situation where the nitro group and the methoxy group direct to the same positions. And this, these two cases are going to occur when you have two substituents, one activator and one deactivator, or one, you know, let's, let's be more specific, one ortho para director. one meta director, either ortho or para to each other. You're going to get reinforcement of the direction, and that's pretty cool. Okay. So uh, let me get my other functional groups on here in a minute. Um, the, diff the difference between this uh, ortho case and the previous one are there are two positions that are sort of doubly directed. And I'm going to draw both of those products here. Chlorine can end up ortho to the methoxy group or can end up para to the methoxy group. And for some of the same reasons I've talked about previously, it's this second one that's likely the major product uh, because of sterics, which favor para uh, respect to the methoxy, but it's also, so, you know, so we're here, we're next to the ethoxy, methoxy, and here we're far away from it. Third example. Now I'm going to put the meta to each other. I saved meta for last because meta is where things start to get uh, unhelpful, right? So 
The methoxy group is an ortho para director, so it directs to the two positions ortho to it and to the, the para position. The nitro group is a meta director, and it directs to, to this meta position. So not the same. Yeah, I'm trying to make this clear that it's, and the other meta position is where the methoxy group is. Well, this is unhelpful, and I could um, you know, draw all four possibilities here. It looks like all four positions uh, are, are directed to, and you just throw your hands up in defeat. But there is still some logical sense, sense to this. In cases like this, the strongest activator wins. Right? So you want to go back to your table of activators, deactivators, uh, and I mentioned in a previous video that I arranged them strong activator, moderate activator, weak activator, weak deactivator, moderate deactivator, strong deactivator, because in fact, this arrangement suggests that the farther to the left you are, the more important that functional group is for controlling the regiochemical outcome on multiply substituted rings. And so we look, in our particular case, we have uh, methoxide, which is an example of an ether. Right, so it's over here in my strong activator category. And we have nitro, which is over here in my strong deactivator category. And according to this rule of thumb that strong act, stronger activators wins, then we're going to go based on the methoxy. And that at least rules out what the, the nitro group effect might be. But even so, there are still three possible products, and I'm going to end up drawing all of them, so bear with me. <clears throat> the chlorine can be ortho to the methoxy and para to the nitro. It can be ortho to the nitro and para to the methoxy, or it can be squished in between the two. And the only thing that I can share with you uh, is that this last one is not likely the major product because now we have lots of steric interactions. But between these other two, I cannot, you know, from the structures of these substituents, give you a good sense of which one's going to win. You would want to go need to, you would need to go into lab and do the reaction, and then I'm going to finish off doing two examples with uh, activate with with similar behaving functional groups. So I'm going to have a methyl group, and uh, we're going to put the phenol here. So both uh, actually, let's put a put a bromine and a phenol, and um, yeah, both of these are ortho para directors. And so again, you have that, like the phenol is going to direct here and the bromine is going to direct here. But again, we follow the same rule that the strongest activator wins. And so we go back and look at the table. Phenol's over here in strong activator. Uh, bromine is actually a weak deactivator. So even though it's an ortho para director, it's a deactivator. You know, if I'd done methyl, uh, I think I'm going to do that in my next case. Right. Let me go get my reaction because we are doing uh, we're doing chlorination as as our prototypical reaction, and I failed to show that here, and I failed to draw it in here as well. Uh, let's go get my chloro. You know, since the para position relative to the oxygen is blocked. We already have a bromine there. We're going to get chlorination ortho to the, the hydroxy group. All right. Let's do an example. Um, I'm going to put a, we'll leave it as oxygen, but we're going to have a methyl group here. We're going to do the same kind of reaction. And now this is going to be 
troublesome because I have two activating groups on the ring, so you should expect some degree of overreaction going on here. And again, you would see feel like most of these positions are directed to. The phenol directs here and here. The methyl group directs here and here, and so does the phenol. Uh, the position that is meta to both of them is not directed to, so that's at least one you can rule out. You still get to follow the original advice that the strongest activator wins. So the hydroxy group is going to win, but ultimately you're probably going to get multiple substituents uh, because this reaction tends to overreact. I just want to do one last uh, example, and that's on a case where perhaps you have Two, two equivalent activators para to each other. And we're going to do uh, a reaction here. And, and I'm actually going to keep my same uh, prototypical reaction. Uh, <clears throat> there is a tendency here that you get, uh, and you're going to get overreaction like you should expect that the product is going to end up having two or more chlorine atoms on it. So all four positions are equally activated because of the, the paramethoxy groups. But once the first chlorine goes on, this position here, para to that first chlorine, is slightly better than all of the others because it is ortho to a strong activator, and it's para to that other act, uh, other ortho para director. So the second chlorination happens in this pattern. And frequently, these kinds of reactions where you have a para substituted activators, you generally end up with, if you're gonna end up with two substitutions, they end up para to each other as well and you have these, these hydrogens left open. So this concludes my video on multiple substituents. Uh, in my examples later on, I'll probably work through something with three substituents, but if you have three substituents, it gets messier, but the strongest activator still wins. And that's the, uh, the message that summarizes this video. But if you have two substituents, the strongest activator wins. In other words, the functional group that's farther left on this table is the thing that controls uh, what happens. Now, if you happen to have two different functional groups and they're in the same class of things, that's hard to predict um, without doing the experiment or doing some kind of uh, you know, computational modeling. But generally, those types of questions are not you know, you're not thrown for a loop with those kinds of questions at the undergraduate level. Thank you for watching.